the minute I met Jesus, I was in my early 20s. I was addicted to things that I shouldn't have been addicted to. I was into myself. I thought I was the coolest thing on the planet. My wife reminded me that I wasn't, but I thought I was. I thought I could do anything. I thought I was unstoppable, and I was running from God. But I was a slave to my own sin. Inside of that, even though on the outside I looked proud and I looked like I knew what I was doing and I can handle having this child and I can handle being married, inside I knew I was dead. There was no life in me. I looked at my job and pretty soon I was like, make money, what's the point of all that? I looked at my life and I thought, there's got to be something more than this and I was stuck in my sin, filled with depression. If, you were to, if I was to be brutally honest with you, I would tell you that I was insecure. I was lost. The Bible describes people being lost. I was it, capital L, lost. And I went to church and I heard that God loved me. And it was the most amazing thing. God just literally opened my heart and said, what is holding you back from my love? I said, well, God, I I think I want to do it myself. I think I could do this on my own. And he said, you can't do anything apart from me. And when I opened up my heart, I remember the pastor saying, just raise your hand right now if you want to accept Jesus Christ, if you want him to be a part of your life. And my beautiful young wife was sitting next to me and it was our third time at church. And at the very end, I'm like, my head's bowed, eyes closed. I'm sitting there and I'm just, tears are just coming down and my heart's just like, you get that way sometimes? It's like, you want to start like crying, but like there's guys around, so you want to be manly. So you kind of do one of these, fine. (laughs) You all right, dad? Sure. (laughs) But man, I couldn't hold anything back that moment. The Lord was on me and I just broke. And my tears, and I'm just like, I lifted my hand up, and I look over, my wife, her hand's up, and I'm like looking at her going, you too, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> and we went forward, and we met Jesus. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that life has been rosy and wonderful ever since. That's not the case. When I received Jesus Christ, I knew that I was signing up for war. Because it is a spiritual struggle, a, a spiritual struggle among all of us. But it was his grace that came upon my life that said, Jeremy, I know where you've been. I know what you've done. I know what you're thinking. But I love you anyway. Receive my love. I think a lot of people have a hard time receiving the love of God because we're so filled with guilt and shame over our past. And we, we use the, the, the basis of our faith as on our performance, not on Christ and the cross. It starts how to become a friend of Jesus, guys. It starts by the way that we think. I think that what you think about God is the most important thing about you. Let me say that again. I think that what you think about God is the most important thing about you. Do you see God as this authoritarian dictatorship, performing God that if you mess up, then you have to get shoved into the closet never to be used of again? Do you have this idea that God may have some good Christians and then the rest of us, we screw up and don't just throw us away? No, the Bible tells us that God says he'll never leave you or forsake you. That if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. That's it. And our job as Christians that are saved is to abide in the vine, to remain, to hang in there. But it starts with a perspective that says that there's nothing that I can do to make God love me any more, and there's nothing I can do to make God love any less, so therefore I'm just going to be loved by God. And when you just receive his love, when you allow him to go into those moments where you're depressed, when you allow his love to go into those moments where you're anxious, if you allow his love to go into those moments where you're feeling insecure, that God pours out his heart in you and says, you are mine. You're not a slave to sin anymore. You're now my friend. I'm calling you my own.